Today, we are forging one of the most crucial tools for blacksmithing and metalworking. A request that's been very prevalent in the comments, an anvil, and finally get past my makeshift rocks. An anvil is one of the most important tools in blacksmithing and metalworking. At its core, it's just a large chunk of metal to hit against. However, the larger the anvil, the higher the inertia, and the more effective each blow transfers to the piece of metal being worked. Getting something strong and dense enough to handle the countless blows makes the anvil one of the most important tools of the blacksmith. So with this difficult forging project, I enlisted the help from some experienced blacksmiths we've worked with before, Joe and Adri. Be sure to check out Joe's work on Instagram and Adri's own YouTube channel. All right, so I'm back with Joe and Adri, and we're gonna tackle the next step in kind of a blacksmithing, which is making an actual anvil. Historically, especially in the earliest phases of iron working, you would have been working with very rudimentary tools and probably using a stone or a lump of bog iron or a smelted bloom that they'd compacted to continue forging their anvils. They would have found anything that would have worked that was large enough to absorb the force of the hammering and not suck out all of the heat from the metal. And stone makes a terrible anvil because of its thermal properties and how chippy it is. And yeah. it doesn't, yes, it does not, does not do well under hammering forces. The earliest anvils were likely just rocks, like what I've been using so far. From there, some would be cast in bronze, something we did last year. Unfortunately, that anvil didn't survive long as it eventually snapped at a weak point in the casting. Andy has cast a bronze anvil in the past, but those, when moving into iron tools, really would have been short-term solutions. You can't really use bronze long-term as an anvil because you'll crack it or the heat will anneal it and you'll deform the face. Eventually, iron and steel became the preferred metal, with early anvils basically just being a chunk of iron. As it evolved, more specific shapes were designed and formed for specific purposes, such as the bick or horn, which is used for working curved pieces. In the 20th century, as mass-produced manufacturing techniques became more prevalent, the anvil has become a rarer and less familiar object. Today, most people are likely more familiar with its use in cartoons as a heavy object that is dropped on people's heads. This trope emerged as anvils were easily recognized as a heavy, dense object that was easy to draw, and then became a tradition of animation, even as people became less familiar with the actual use of an anvil. The earliest example in a cartoon is the 1942 A Tale of Two Kitties. If this leaves you nostalgic for some old cartoons like The Roadrunner, you might be wondering where you can easily stream some of these old cartoons. Something that might help open up additional streaming options would be a VPN, like today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. Using PIA, you can change your location to another country, like Australia. Then suddenly you have some unique streaming options like the 1979 classic, The Bugs Money Roadrunner Movie. Unblock your Amazon Prime, Hulu, and Disney+, Plus, Netflix, UK and US, and BBC accounts today. But PIA doesn't allow you to just watch your favorite TV shows and movies. By using Private internet access to keep all your private information away from snoopers, hackers, even your internet service provider. Private internet access is the leading no-log VPN service and has unlimited access to almost thousands of servers in dozens of countries. It works on all platforms from Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Amazon Fire, and Linux, and you can use it on up to 10 devices at once. There's no risk because it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Check out PIA right now and use the link in the description to support our channel and get two years and three months for free for just $2.59 a month. Now, onto the forging. Today, we do not have a anvil stone, as it were, so we will be using a modern pattern anvil. Making this more Scandinavian style two-piece anvil is going to last a lot longer, and it's going to work out way better in the series when we don't have the time to continuously make anvils over and over. So where are you thinking? This would be our shoulder. Okay. Tongs are going to be interestingly slippy. There we go. And that's what happens. Going counterclockwise or clockwise? Now I gotta get in rhythm because I'm so used to following Joe. Are you you st right. you start? That 
That was a good one. This works better. Yep. There's just that bend in it that's wonky. There we go. Ready to go. Yeah. And there we go. Pretty all right shoulder so far. I'm waiting for it. We are square there, so I think that's good. Probably straighten her out a little bit. Let's just... This is looking like an anvil now, though. Yeah. This is super close to a lot of examples I've seen already. It's definitely starting to look like an anvil. We did get a very clean taper, though. Yeah. I probably want one of these things for traveling. Yeah. Take one more heat with the platter. Sounds good. Nice little mushroom anvil. I've got beeswax linseed oil. Linseed oil works. All this uh, is basically the scale that's forming in the outside soaks up the oil and it forms a protective coating like gun bluing. And then there's wax mixed in with it which melts in and seals it off to further protect it. This is definitely a steak anvil. Yeah. Turned out nice and flat. Yeah, nice and flat on the top. It'll do the job. With the first steak anvil done, next we moved on to the second piece, the horn anvil. Start working some of the humps. There's good instincts to pull your feet out of the way as soon as it starts slipping. The blacksmith shuffle. Yep. Yeah, now that we got the first taper down, this is striking. This is striking. It's a strike. This is a hammer. It's a hammer indeed. Got a good rhythm started. That that was pretty good actually. Everything was solid. There's not a lot to clean up. No, I'm honestly pretty proud of how that forging went. That's terrifying. Just don't hit me in the head. Big horn. 
So if you ever do want to make a socketed spear, there's your mandrel. that log. You want it to burn itself and to have a really nice tight fit that you don't want to burn away anything. Yeah. So when you chisel it out, you don't split the wood. There we go. With the anvils completed, we brought them back to the studio. If you're like me, you might be wondering that if an anvil is just a heavy object to hit against, is an iron one really that much better than a rock? To put it to the test, I challenged Idri to try and forge the same thing on both the new anvils and a rock and see how they compare. Now we're going to try and compare and see what the difference really is between our homemade anvils here and a rock. This is a new rock after the untimely death of rocks one through four. So through this process, we'll be able to see what we're capable of, what the different tools can do differently, how many more options we have when we're forging, and in doing so, we're gonna try to make a couple more tools for the coal forge. First up, the rock. <laughs> I wasn't even hitting it that hard. Finish out the heat, I guess, or not. Where's the next victim? Now if I can split this one, it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> this is honestly more tiring. Like you have to have intense focus to get it to stay on this while you're striking it. And it's not just because it's on a smaller log, it's because the surface isn't flat, so every strike you have, it pushes it back and forth. There's just one little nook that I can use to actually flatten things out. I think that's the best we're going to get, so it's not even worth trying to draw it out any further. Because this is relatively straight, and I, there's no way you're going to get it any straighter, so we might as well bend it over. You just have to make concessions when you're working on that thing. I think that's what we're gonna get out of this because I have no way to fix it. <laughs> now to try and forge the same thing using the actual anvils we just made. can definitely see more little dents and dings in the one made on the rock and it's definitely not as flat when you look at the surfaces. A little bit about this anvil setup here. This is a fairly common setup to have a stake anvil 
and a separate horn because it's easier to manufacture. A lot of these parts can do really specific things that you can't just do on a block of steel or a rock. You can use the horn to concentrate your force on a smaller area, or you can use it as a guide to make round shapes. When you're working on the flat face of the anvil here, you know that you have a nice flat register and you can compare your work to the surface of the anvil itself. So you get a nice even surface all the way along. You can also use these edges where they're mushroomed out to part off pieces like we did here. When I took that and hit it against the side, what that did is create a tiny little concentration on this sharp edge. It helped me cut through without having to use a hot cut chisel. So between these two tools, you can make pretty much anything. We have made two different rakes out of the same material in the same forge with the same hammers, just changing what we use as an anvil. It's almost impossible to keep things straight and stable. Everything flies everywhere. You can't hope to get a square edge or a flat corner no matter what you do. Every single thing is a shortcut with how much the rock shakes. You can't go down into planishing heats and clean things up to get a nice smooth surface. You leave pock marks in your work all the time because of the uneven surface of the rock. Overall, it's just a way different experience. Even though you can make the same thing, it's a world of difference working on an anvil compared to a rock. A huge difference in effort. Every single swing I took on the rock, I had to really swing it because that's the only way I could get any metal to move. Working on our stake anvil, I had the ability to choke up and really think about where I wanted to move metal just ever so slightly. You can finish up and just get a smooth surface. I never want to work on a rock again. <laughs> Thanks again to Joe and Adri. Check out the link to see more of their work. And now with this crucial step in our blacksmithing, we can move on to some larger and bigger projects. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.